fucking show. Holy shit. <laughs> Nothing's been set on fire yet, which is very surprising to me. David acted, in that opening act, David acted exactly like my, ra ra my, uh, my rabbi acted at my bar mitzvah. Woo! I swear to God. Exactly how he acted, that was my rabbi at my bar mitzvah. <laughs> no, I'm not. I didn't have a bar mitzvah, guys. I'm sorry. I my parents were way too cheap to give me a bar mitzvah. <laughs> I don't know if that makes me less Jewish for not having a bar mitzvah. Or more Jewish because my parents were too cheap to give me a bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, David, David. Fucking David's hanging out. He looks like Lord Fuckwad from Shrek. <laughs> Am I right? When he talks, when he talks, I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you guys to close your eyes. Tell me it doesn't sound like a black guy trying to do a Mexican accent. <laughs> Am I right? That's bro. Chinese. Ah, uh, I got five minutes up here. I might go a little longer because I have some shit to share with you guys. Something happened to me last night, guys. I've been in question for 24 hours about what life is after this event that happened. So last night, I'm uh, smoking a cig with my, my girlfriend on her break at work. It's about 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. And a car pulls in the parking lot. Halfway up the curb, the car dies completely, just runs out of gas. So it's halfway in the street, halfway up the curb. I'm praying to God this person does not ask for our help, okay? <laughs> because the car is like, it's one of those old white police cars, you know, like the Ford sedans that still have like the cop mirror on it, which means either it's driven by an undercover cop or a drug addict. <laughs> Neither are my cup of tea at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. <laughs> he peeks his head out the window and he says, yo! Can you come help me push my car up? Being the naive pushovers that me and my girlfriend are, we're like, yeah, we'll come help me push your car up, man. We walk over there. First thing I notice about the car is the trunk of the car is forced shut with a bungee cord, which means it's not an undercover cop, it is a drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> me and my girlfriend are pushing the car, and he's steering it. The car is going at a rate of about a foot per hour, and the guy has no idea why. And then he looks back, sees that it's my girlfriend, and just me pushing the car, and realizes this will never get pushed into the fucking parking lot unless he helps. He gets out of the car to help us, and remember, the car is like slanted upwards. So my eye level, when he's standing up, is at like his chest. He has no shirt on. <laughs> First thing I see is a huge swastika and white power tattooed on his chest. And then I make eye contact with him, and then I frantically look at the ground. He comes back, helps us push the car. The only thing going through my fucking head was don't let him know you're a Jew. <laughs> Just whatever you do, don't. But I can't stop looking at his tattoo. Like there's like a magnetic force between like my kosher blood and his <laughs> his racist ink. There's like like I'm just I'm not even like pushing the car. I'm just walking with it, just looking at his fucking swastika on his chest. We get his car parked. He says, thank you guys, I really appreciate it. And I'm just trying not to make eye contact. I'm like, yeah, no problem. And then he asks, hey, do you have a sick? And I said, no, man, I, this is my last one, I'm sorry. Which was a lie. I had a full pack of cigarettes in my car. Now, I didn't lie because I was scared of him. I lied because I'm a, 
I'm, I'm a cheap Jew. I didn't want to give him a fucking cigarette. <laughs> and I mean, they're like, fuck, I blew my cover! He's got a no! I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I'm sweating. And then my girlfriend says, oh, I have one in my purse inside. Let me go get it. She runs inside, leaves me and a neo-Nazi alone <laughs> in an empty parking lot. Next thing you know, I'm sitting on the curb, smoking a cigarette with him, having the best conversation of my life. <laughs> For real, like the best conversation I've had in years, guys. Like we were talking about life, our hobbies. Like I told him I did stand up, he told me he did photography, which is fucking hilarious that he does photography. <laughs> um, I would really like to see that camera roll really bad. Um, and I'm getting pissed because he hasn't said anything racist yet. And it's pissing me off. Like I'm like, why is he not being racist? Like isn't he supposed to be racist? I just want one racist thing to come out of his mouth so I can just leave. He hasn't said anything racist. Next thing you know, an African-American man runs across traffic, yelling frantically. He says, oh, he's in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a moment for racism, it was right there. <laughs> so I get really pissed, and I'm like, man, someone must owe him money. And he laughs. And then I'm like, fuck, I just made a joke about a black guy to a neo-Nazi, and he laughed. I need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but I didn't know if I should tell him I'm Jewish. I really wanted to tell him I was Jewish, really badly. But I didn't, I stood up, shook his hand, I told him to have a great night, get home safe. I told him he was gonna sleep in his car. Drug addict. <laughs> As I pulled away, I rolled the window down, and I said, Mazel motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs>